off-grid system, diesel genset, solar batteries, big fuel cost. Is there another fuel we can use? Veggie oil, maybe? Let's find out. Nelly here from Greenwood Solutions. This week's presentation is on off-grid systems and diesel gensets and alternative fuels. In fact, we're talking veggie oil. So after watching the presentation, you'll understand the cost benefit of running your diesel genset on veggie oil and diesel. Now, if you like these presentations and you want to see more of them, hit that subscription button, tell your mates, get them to hit the subscription button as well. Let's get stuck into it. Now, most domestic off-grid systems utilise a fossil fuel component, in other words, a, a genset. And in many cases, the fuel of choice is diesel. Now, the generator is there to obviously charge the batteries when there is insufficient solar or another renewable energy resource. And also to spare the batteries large loads that may be better handled by the genset or the generator. And also service loads outside of solar production hours, and obviously all of the above. Now in regards to the gen set we'll be looking at, we'll assume the following. It's 12 kVA and has a power factor of 0.8. Now the generator will never operate continuously at more than 85% of full load. So the maximum continuous output is 12 times 0.8 the power factor times 0.85 and that's 8.16 kilowatts. Now a generator this size will consume the following in regards to diesel fuel and you can see that in the table below. But we are limiting to 85% of the power factor corrected figure. So looking at approximately the following figures. How many hours per day, per week, per year will the genset run? To answer this question, we, we have to make some assumptions concerning the actual solar battery system. Now, let's assume that the customer's actual daily load will be 12 kilowatt hours. And from the load analysis, it is highly likely that most of the daily loads will be outside of solar production hours. Now, the reality is, the split in this case is 60% nighttime and 40% daytime. And this means that 12 kilowatt hours times 0.6 equals 7.2 kilowatt hours outside of solar production hours. So obviously this must come directly from the batteries and possibly the generator. Now the remaining 4.8 kilowatt hours comes from the solar component, obviously if the sun's out. And there's more. But the sun doesn't shine every day, so you can have extended periods of cloudy weather. And the reality is, depending on where you are, you can sometimes have a week of cloudy weather. So what happens then? Now all of this puts extra load on the battery system, which needs to be sized accordingly, and all the generator. Now also there are some large loads that the customer wants uh, the gen set to deal with. Now obviously what the customer wants must come into play. Now maybe the customer has said, look, I only want the generator to run during winter months, hardcore. If this is the case, must have to take this into account with the battery storage capacity design. But we've got to remember, batteries don't produce energy. They only convert energy that has been inputted. So as you can see, there are many factors to consider, but in this scenario, we have to make some decisions. And they are as follows. The generator is only gonna run through the winter months. So the solar battery ratio has to be designed really well. The total hours run by the generator over the three month period equate to 90 hours of runtime. 
Now, obviously this averages to about three hours per day. The issue is the customer also has some really big loads that exceed the 85% capacity of the inverter charger. And the decision has been made to service these infrequent loads with the genset. Now these loads occur all year round as well. Now when designing off-grid systems from the perspective of the genset, you ideally need to run at almost full load. And basically it's not an efficient use of a genset if underloaded. This is because with diesel gensets, glazing of the cylinders can be an issue with underloading. Also, we want to minimize the overall run time. So we have to fully utilize the output of the genset as much as possible. Now we have to establish how many hours per year outside of the winter only normal running of the genset is required to service large intermittent loads. Now the customer has a workshop with welders and other heavy equipment and basically weekends are when these additional heavy loads may occur and they're happening approximately two to four hours every weekend. So it's a total of say 50 weeks, he has some time off, times three hours, 150 hours a year at full load for the workshop and 90 hours at full load for the winter period and this is a total of 240 hours at full load per year. We'll also assume another 50 hours per year at three quarter load and 20 hours a year at half load. We can see all the information in the table below. Again, we can see all the information in the table below. So how much will this cost for the year? You've got a total of 710 litres per year consumption, and we'll assume $2 a litre for the diesel. So we're talking about a total of $1,420 for that year. Now what about after 10 years? We're going to assume that the diesel fuel costs increase 4%, 5%, 6%, and 7% per year. And you can see that in the table below. Now, is there another alternative to diesel? It can be seen that the annual cost for diesel is considerable, and after 10 years, assuming different percentage increases in fuel costs, you can spend up to nearly $20,000 for that 10-year period at 7% increase cost increase per year after the first year. Now, what if we use another fuel that is acceptable to a diesel genset? And we're talking about spent used vegetable oil. This particular approach uses both vegetable oil and diesel. So you have to collect the spent vegetable oil from a local source, preferably. You'll have to secure a fuel tank, and you can use old oil heater storage tanks. And then you have to filter the oil through an appropriate mesh. And you have to connect the veggie oil tank to the genset, simply. All fluids have a viscosity, so the more viscous, the more sticky. And vegetable oils tend to be more viscous than diesel, so there's some potential issues with fuel lines clogging due to cold temperatures. And now, to overcome this, I'm suggesting the following approach. The genset, when it first comes on, runs off diesel. At a certain point, the tank flicks over to the veggie oil. Now, before the genset finishes its load servicing cycle, it flicks back to the diesel. And in addition, there's a small heater or heat exchange system uh, could be used to ensure that the veggie oil doesn't solidify in, in the colder months. Obviously, this is not an issue in the tropics, and in fact, they're all manner of machinery running on straight veggie oil. Now, how can this be achieved? As there are two fuels involved, the system must take into account a few things. When running off diesel, no back feed to the veggie oil tank and vice versa. This can be achieved with solenoids in the respective fuel lines or similar. And also we'll need some kind of preheater or heat exchange to deal with veggie oil's viscosity. Now, is there anything else to consider? Now with an off-grid system using say Selectronic SP Pro or similar, the generator can be programmed to go through a warm-up stage before the loads are serviced by it. And the same thing can be achieved after the pre-programmed generator runtime has expired and you can program a warm down period. 
So I'm suggesting that in the warm up and warm down period, the generator is running on diesel. This means there must be a relay that signals a solenoid or solenoids to open and close on the respective diesel and veggie oil tanks. So how much can I really save using veggie oil? Now we'll have to make some assumptions concerning the following parameters. We know that the gen set will run 310 hours per year in total. Full load at 240 hours, three quarter load for 50 hours and half load for 20 hours. The question is we have to determine the number of times the gen set starts and stops on diesel. In other words, the number of events and the actual duration of each event. More assumptions. We'll have to make some more assumptions that include each generator event occurs for 15 minutes. Out of each event, two minutes warm up and two minutes warm down. So the generator is running on veggie oil nine minutes per session. And so now we have to work out the number of events per load status, full load, three quarter load, and half load. Then calculate the amount of fuel used for both diesel and veggie oil and calculate the cost of diesel with this approach. Oh my gosh, my brain, the maths. Calculating exact hours for each load status. See the table below. Calculating the exact cost for each load status. Again, you can see this in the table below. We can see that there is a considerable saving if the gen set is run on veggie oil for the majority of the runtime. Now diesel only, you're spending you know, nearly $1,500 a year for the first year. With the veggie oil option, you're only spending $379 for that year. You got a saving of $1,041. Now over 10 years, assuming the same increase in fuel costs, the savings would be considerable. Questions to ask. Obviously, there's a lot more to the whole veggie oil scenario and things to consider would include what dollar value do we attach to the collection and filtration of the veggie oil? Now, veggie oil is less energy dense, so compared to diesel, more fuel will be used. We have to find an appropriate storage tank and converting it will cost X amount of dollars. There's also the cost of the solenoids and additional fuel pump for the veggie oil also need to consider how to keep the veggie oil from completely solidifying in colder climates. All questions that we will address in another presentation. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on diesel fuel alternatives, specifically for off-grid solar battery systems. I'm Veli from Greenwood. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, feel free to drop us a line. And if you like what you see and you want to see more of these videos, hit that subscription button. It only just takes you know, a finger. See you next time. Bye.